everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Board Gaming video. Today's video is going to be about essentially an issue that a lot of gamers have, especially when you get to start having a relatively respectable collection of games as I do. The issue comes whenever you have game nights, whenever you just go out and you want to play games. The biggest issue becomes how are you going to get your games to it. If you're not hosting a game night, then that means that you have to go somewhere else, whether it's somebody else's house or, you know, just like some local meeting place, like a friendly local game store, whatever it happens to be. And the issue is that you end up with something that looks at least somewhat akin to this. And this becomes a really huge problem because we have this giant tub that's filled with games. Great games, right? But the problem is... Do you really want to lug this around all over the place? No! So the thing is that I, in this particular video, have endeavored to look at several games that are physically small. So you may remember from one of the other videos that I did a while ago that I talked about games that give you bang for your buck. This would be relatively similar because the whole point of that video was to talk about games that are inexpensive but offer a lot of replayability and all that kind of stuff. This one is going to be fairly similar because small games are generally cheaper. But at the same time, it's going to be different because I really wanted to focus on the physical size of the game itself. Now that's going to be important for a couple of these, but without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started with my number five. I have a game that really doesn't look like initially it's going to fit into this particular bracket of being a physically small game. It is Splendor. Now for those of you who have played Splendor before, you know probably why I'm going to be talking about this, but for those of you who haven't played it, you're probably looking at it and you're like, that is a huge game, what are you talking about? Well, the answer is inside of the box. Because if you've ever looked in the Splendor box, the only thing that requires that much space is the actual instructions. It's only a single fold-out page, and then inside of the box itself, you can see barely any of the space is actually taken up by the game components themselves. This is a game that you can easily put into a really, either a really tiny box, like maybe a collectible card game box, or you could even put it into a plastic bag. You could take it into like a gallon bag and it would be perfectly fine. You can see you basically just have three tiers of cards. You have these gem uh, tokens, they look like uh, poker chips. And then you have uh, these, these noble cards that are uh, made of cardboard here. But the vast majority of this game is empty space. Like the, the entirety of it pretty much is all empty space. The vast majority is just filled up with this uh, plastic insert, right? So, Splendor is a really, really fun game. It's a great game. It's a very nice strategic game. Uh, one thing that you'll see throughout all five of these is that they're all relatively fast. I mean, they are small, so you can't really expect them to have a whole lot of gameplay aspects. But Splendor is one of the ones that is a little bit more strategic, at least. So it's kind of nice. It's a really great filler game. Uh, it plays, I believe it's two to four people. Yes. Uh, two to four people, so it's really perfect for those in-between times at game nights when you've got, you know, group A over there trying to finish up a big game and group B is just now finishing up, then you can try to, a uh, little bit of co-mingling to play a couple of games like this. But either way, Splendor, the reason it's at the bottom of the list is because it starts off in this big giant box, but you can very, very easily shrink it down into something as small as literally a plastic bag. It's The cards are pretty uh, pretty good quality, so you're not really going to destroy anything. The only thing is the box looks nicer on a shelf. But either way, Splendor, my number five tiny game. another game that fits into a similar way of Splendor, where it starts off as being relatively large, but you can very easily, easily shrink it down. This game is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Now, I have talked about this game several times before, and you may notice that I now own it. I'm very, very excited to have done so. I'm awesomely excited to now actually have this game. It's a really, really great game. This is another one that works very well as a filler game. It literally takes about 15 to 20 minutes, including the time it takes for you to teach people how to play the game. 
If you utilize the app, it's a little bit easier, but at the same time, it can be very, very difficult to hear if you're in a really crowded gaming room. Uh, so the app might not necessarily be the best choice for you. All you really need is somebody who knows the script and it's perfectly fine, and you can just have somebody actually say what the app tells you. Uh, but either way, it's a really cool game. You can notice that the box is still relatively small, but inside, once again, just like Splendor, the only thing that really takes up all of the space are the instruction booklets, okay? In this case, you can have the thing that actually explains the game itself, and then you have this quick little getting started guide, which is kind of nice. But inside the actual game is where you have all your little cardboard tokens. Okay? And again, these are very, very small, and not only that, but since they're all cardboard, they're all really, really durable. So it's perfect for putting into like just even like a sandwich bag or something like that, and you can easily have this, uh, this game carrying around, uh, potentially even fitting in your pocket if you wear cargo pants, right? If you're super cool like that. But either way, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, a really great game, a ton of fun, lots of replayability, very, very fast, and obviously very small. My number four. I have what's really more of a series of games than a single game. The reason I say it's a series is because this is a, sort of a title that spreads across all sorts of different uh, aspects of gaming, or not necessarily aspects of gaming, but really aspects of society, and the game itself is Timeline. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Timeline, the whole point of the game is that you take cards and the idea is that you're trying to put them in chronological order. You have two sides of a card. You have one card that has a date and the other side does not have a date, but they both have the name of something, some kind of a something here. Uh, in my case, I have inventions, and so this has uh, things ranging from like stone cutting as one of the first, if not the very first thing, all the way up to like the invention of the compact disc. Uh, some of our favorite uh, is uh, the invention of role-playing games, uh, invention of the stethoscope, the telescope, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. It's just you know, human inventions of all different sorts. Very, very simple games, and the great thing is that uh, for the Timeline series, quote-unquote, you have things like arts and drama, you have theater, you have um, historical events, all sorts of different stuff. So any, pretty much any interest that you have is probably going to be covered at least in some way by a Timeline game, and they all play exactly the same. And again, just like with the other two, I'll go ahead and pop open the box here, and it comes in actually a really nice, uh, nice tin here, uh, but the instructions are relatively small. But you can see the only thing that's really in this is literally two stacks of cards. That's it. That, that's the entirety of the game. It's just two little stacks of cards that fit nicely into the box, and then you have your tiny little instruction booklet. And that's it. I personally really like this little tin because it's just, it's a really good quality tin. Uh, and, you know, potentially you could even take the cards out and then use this to hold other stuff. It's just really, really nice. Uh, but one of the great things about Timeline is that this is probably the most versatile game on this particular list. It plays up to eight people. It goes anywhere from two to eight people. And again, just like with the other two I talked about, it's very, very quick. It takes only about 15 to 20 minutes, really just depending on how knowledgeable everybody is about the specific category of the Timeline game that you're talking about. But either way, Timeline, a really fun game. Obviously, this is one of the ones that actually is very physically small. But either way, my number three. I've got a game that actually comes with its own miniature container whenever you actually purchase it, and it is Love Letter. Yay! Love Letter, as you can see, actually comes with its own little tiny bag. This is a really interesting game because there's there's actually several versions of this. You've got Batman Love Letter, you've got the Munchkin Loot Letter, uh, but they all play virtually identically. And the whole point is that every person is given two cards, and then you get rid of one card, or you play a card, you do... Uh, 
some kind of an action that's associated with the card, and then you keep the other one, and then you draw up a, a new one. I believe it plays up to four players, so again, it's a very, very good filler game, but I believe it's only three or four. I don't think it has a, a very big range. But again, just like with uh, Splendor or pretty much any of the other games I talked about, it's really good if you're just, you know, two, three, four people waiting for, like, a larger game to start, like something that needs five or six to really be good. But either way, Love Letter, obviously extremely small. It literally comes in its own nice little bag here. Uh, and all this is is just cards and then the little instruction booklet and some of these little uh, chips to keep track of who's winning. Because you play through, I believe it's until somebody wins two or three times. Uh, but again, that's, that's a really great thing because you can make the game longer or shorter just depending on how many times you have to win in order to actually win the entirety of the game. But either way, you got these these nice little cards that tell people the list of cards and the, the quick little how to play summary, this little tiny instruction booklet, and then the actual cards that you're playing with, right? Very, very small, very, very simple, but a lot of fun. This is a really, really great game and very surprisingly strategic. It's a lot about player interaction and seeing what people are doing and obviously taking a look at what people are keeping and what people are not keeping and all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really awesome game. Obviously, uh, this is probably the fastest one to set up of all of the ones that I've talked about, uh, simply because it's literally this tiny little baggie and you don't need a whole lot of time whatsoever. Uh, timeline is probably a close second to the fastest to set up. Uh, but either way, very, very cool, very nice little game. Uh, you can check it out and uh, make, make certain, too, that if you, if you prefer, you can look at some of the ones that are themed differently as well, like the Batman or the Munchkin one, uh, which is really nice, especially for non-gamers who are either uh, just trying to get into the hobby or who are just like a little bit reluctant to try new games that they may not be familiar with. Then you can just say, well, I've got this one. It's about Batman. You like Batman. I know you like Batman. You know, whatever it happens to be. But either way, Love Letter, awesome game. Very, very small, obviously. And my number two. actually crosses over with my previous video about getting the most bang for your buck. And I believe that this is actually the only one that does so, but it is such a good game and it's so small that I really had to include Citadels. Citadels is a really, really awesome game where you build up a tableau of cards. It's very similar to things like Race for the Galaxy, where the whole point is that you're just trying to build up some kind of cards. Okay, uh, you may notice that up, in, up until and including this point, most of these games are really, really card heavy. And the fact is that if you have an actual physical board, then you're going to end up with something like this, where you need a big giant box because you have to hold a board, right? Whereas with something that requires cards, obviously cards are very, very tiny and you don't need a lot of space. But either way, Citadels, I wanted to put it number one simply because it's, uh, as far as the tiny games are concerned, at least the ones that I've really played and really understand, Citadels is really the best in terms of strategy, right? If you're talking about strategy per, like, cubic centimeter or however you want to measure it. This is a really, really amazing game. Just like many of the other ones, it's very versatile in terms of the number of players and it's also relatively quick. This one's a little bit longer because again, you're talking about a little bit deeper strategy. In this case, uh, this is really heavily into role picking. The idea is that you're trying to pick from a selection of, I believe it is nine if you use the expansion, but you've got a whole bunch of different roles. Uh, uh, take a look at them right here. So you can see that uh, this particular version actually includes an expansion, and uh, some of the expansion roles actually have uh, little stars next to the name. So like you can see here with the wizard, it's got a little star up in the corner right there. That just indicates that it's the, it's the expansion variant, uh, which really, really actually adds a lot in terms of the replayability to this game, because you can use just the original uh, just the original eight cards. You can add the queen, which is the ninth card, uh, so you can play with more people. Uh, you can use any or all of the expansion replacements. So, for example, the uh, a lot of the starred ones actually just serve to replace the original ones because they're numbered from one to, uh, uh, what's it called? One to, 
uh, eight. So for example, we've got the architect and the navigator here, and you can see they're both labeled as number seven, but they do very, 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 very different things. Uh, so you could very easily replace the architect with the navigator, and now you have a very, very different game dynamic. But either way, it's a ton of fun. It's a very, very versatile game. Um, the, the entire point, like I said, is just to build a tableau of uh, these uh, types of cards here. So you can see it just has the cost of the card and then the type of card it is uh, based on the, the color in the uh, in the bottom corner right here uh, and that's that's really pretty much it the whole point is that you're just gathering money building cards using your uh, your character's ability or abilities just depending on uh, who they are uh, some of them give you money depending on what uh, what types of buildings you already have in your tableau uh, some of them just give you uh, special perks for example the king allows you to go first uh, no matter what, but uh, there is a very, very large amount of strategy in such a tiny, tiny little box. Uh, and one of the greatest things is that it's still a relatively short game. You're still looking at only right about half an hour or so. Uh, although to teach people how to do it, you're probably looking at closer to 40 minutes. So not quite as good as strictly as a filler game, but definitely, definitely a great game to take a look at and certainly try out. And again, super tiny. It's a great game just to take pretty much anywhere you go. With all five of the games that I've talked about today, you could probably pretty easily just put them into, you know, like a shopping bag and you would have a decent game night just with these tiny games. I mean, because Citadels, you know, you got your nice strategy, you've got your nice little trivia with Timeline, you've got your fun big group game with Werewolf, you know, all sorts of stuff. But either way, Citadels, my number one tiny game that you can take pretty much anywhere very, very easily. So that's it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed this, the very first video that I've recorded in my brand new super awesome game room. I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually just recently moved and that's why unfortunately I haven't been putting up uh, new videos lately and I do apologize for that. But now I am back and I am re-recording and I actually have this a dedicated, completely dedicated game room where all of my stuff is stored. So it's very, very exciting. I'm really excited. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video about tiny little games uh, simply because in part I had to move all of these games and I had, I want to say, about a dozen like moving boxes full of games. It was ridiculous. And so I was like... I should talk about small games because small games are awesome. So in many, many ways, small games are great because they're, they're great for you to travel with and move around, uh, whether it's going to uh, a game store for a game night or a friend's house, whatever it happens to be. And in addition, it's a really great way to start a new game collection simply because you're talking about games that are still relatively inexpensive, as I mentioned with my, uh, my Bang for the Buck video. But either way, you, know, you don't have to spend nearly as much, but you still get a lot of really good gameplay mechanics in these. Now, there are plenty of other relatively small games, whether it's uh, because you can put them into bags or because they're physically small. Uh, for example, we've got Flux, you've got Munchkin, you've got uh, a whole bunch of other Tiny Fantasy Flight ones, you've got uh, other... Uh, there's other variants of werewolf there's all all sorts of other different types of games and I want to hear what you guys think about these these are all really fun games they're all really great and I want to hear what your guys's personal favorites are what are your favorite tiny games why do you like them do you not like them do you only like playing the bigger ones what are your thoughts please put any anything and everything into the comments below but either way thank you so very much for watching this video and I will see you next time Thank you so very much again for watching my video for my top five favorite physically small games. As I mentioned at the end, I know that this is an enormous category and I would love to hear what all of you have to think. So as always, please put any and all feedback in the comments below. Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree with them? Do you have any others that you yourself have favorites of? Whatever it is, put it all below. Also, as always, I've got several of my playlists linked up at the top of the page so you can see some of my other work. And if you want to see more from me in the future, please go ahead and click on that big giant subscribe button. But with that, thank you very much again for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at DannyCGamingSci, and I will see you next time.